back to the zinc air battery that we talked about a little bit earlier. We have the standard cell potential, and then we're going to stay at 25 degrees Celsius. It says, though, that we, when we did all that and we figured up the, the, the voltage, we acted as if it was all in pure oxygen. And we don't exist in an atmosphere that is pure oxygen. So we don't have a partial pressure of one atmosphere for the oxygen. Instead, we have 0.21 atmospheres. So what is the actual cell potential that we would expect, you know, just here in the room? We'd like to find out what the actual cell potential is. We're going to start with what we thought we were able to use under standard conditions. We're not in standard conditions because it's not one atmosphere of oxygen, but it is the standard temperature, so we'll be able to use the slightly easier formula here. And then we have log of Q. What is the N in this? This zinc is a solid. It has an oxidation state of zero. If I look over here, the zinc in this, because the, this is expected to be a negative two, the zinc is a plus two. So I went from a zero to a two. Okay, that sounds like two electrons were involved. But it's two of these zincs, so it's actually four electrons involved. Okay, so then I can say N is going to be four. Well, what's, what's Q for this? Well, remember how we divided. Q looked an awful lot like K. It was just, I'm setting that up. Well, let's see. What are the products? Well, it turns out the product is a solid. Okay, well, then there's nothing to put in the numerators. I'll just put a one there. And then in the denominator, I have zinc as a solid again. Again, I am going to ignore that as far as making up one of these constants. And then there's the oxygen. So I want the concentration of the oxygen. This is what Q is. My formula just turned into the original one that we'd been given, the 1.65. It would be if it was an all oxygen atmosphere. And then I am going to subtract 0 0.0592 over 4. And then the logarithm of 1 over 0 0.21. When I get done calculating this, I find out, wow, that is not very much. It turns out I'm subtracting only this much. 1.64 volts which is why nobody gets very excited about the whole thing. It hasn't changed it that much. But when we have a battery that is no longer reacting, it's because it has reached an equilibrium. The reason the equipment stops sooner is it be because it requires more voltage than the poor battery can still put out. And that's why there's still going to be a little bit something left in the battery, even if your Xbox controller says, I need new batteries. So here at equilibrium, we have the idea that delta G of the cell is going to be zero, and K and Q are the same exact thing. Delta G is equal to the amount of electrical work before, and I'd said that it's N, F, and E of the cell. In an earlier chapter, we had said that K was E raised to the negative delta G over RT. Well, I'd really like to look at this delta G. So I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll take the natural log of both sides. That means natural log of K is equal to N F E. Oh, I forgot my minus sign up there. Good grief. N F E of the cell over RT. That's where all of that came from that was on the original one before we made it more simple. We were rearranging this so that it was E That's where that came from. Okay. That's just a little bit of a derivation, not much of one, but you would see a lot more of this type of derivation if you took Pchem. And if we just go back to our standard conditions, then we end up with this zero. Zero? Well, of course, zero, because it's 
that's when it's stopping. If you actually get Q at K, when they're equal, this is going to be true, it's going to be stopped. And if it's at the regular temperature, then we get that sort of thing instead of what I've written here.